Laura, you've been working on MYC, uh, the, the well-known factor causing cancer, but uh, MYC inhibition yes. as well. Tell me what you've been doing, because you had quite a dramatic um, instance of this working in a mouse initially, didn't you? Could you tell me what you did? Yes, so uh, we managed to show that uh, MYC inhibition is feasible in uh, animals. Um, there was this fear that inhibiting MYC would cause terrible side effects to normal tissues because MYC is really central in a lot of aspects of physiology of a cell. So everybody expected that inhibited MYC would cause catastrophic side effects. And instead, uh, uh, what we managed to show for the first time was that systemic MYC inhibition is very, very effective as a therapy against cancer, but it doesn't cause these terrible side uh, effects that everybody was expecting. Okay, and you used transgenic mice to yes. do that. What did you do? So we placed omomic um, as a gene inside the mouse in a switchable manner. We can turn on and off uh, omomic. And omomic is the actual it's part of mic. So omomic is a mic mutant that I designed a long time ago when I was uh, an undergrad student still in Italy. And uh, it works as a very efficient MYC inhibitor. It sequesters MYC away from its target genes uh, on the DNA. So uh, we placed OMOMIC, this dominant negative, uh, in the mouse. And we can turn on and off OMOMIC at please, just administering uh, doxycycline to the drinking water of the animals. So that then was proof of principle that you can mess about with MYC yes, and, and not get into trouble. Yeah. and the the effect on uh, tumors was stunning. That was first done uh, um, in uh, a mouse model of lung cancer. And uh, what we saw was that uh, the lung tumors disappeared very, very quickly, while the normal tissues uh, stayed perfectly healthy. The side effects were very minimal and well tolerated. Can you just remind me of which cancers and in what way MYC is involved? Because it is quite broad, isn't it? MYC is actually involved in the majority of human cancers. Uh, what we think is that inhibiting MYC would be a therapeutic strategy possibly for every kind of uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. And to take this proof of principle further, you've now been working on patient samples with gliomas. What yes. did you do there? So we decided to challenge OMOMIC, our MYC inhibitor, with the most difficult cancers to cure. Glioma is in a huge need of new therapy. Patients with glioma usually don't have many therapeutic options. Uh, even surgery is often not an option for them because glioma is very, very invasive. And uh, it's been shown that uh, MYC expression levels are correlated with glioma grade. So the more aggressive the tumor, the more MYC is there. So we thought it was the perfect chance for us to test MYC inhibition as a therapeutic strategy. What did you do and what happened? So we used a mouse model that developed, so a mouse that develops uh, glioma, and we introduced OMOMIC there, our switchable OMOMIC. And first, uh, we saw that we can prevent the development of glioma in these mice. Second, uh, if the glioma is already there, so if we wait for the tumor to develop and then we intervene with OMOMIC, uh, the tumors disappear. So MYC inhibition causes regression of these tumors, uh, immediate relief for the mice that uh, um, in, in, the mice usually develop neurological symptoms, very severe neurological symptoms, or these symptoms disappear as a consequence of MYC inhibition. But we didn't stop uh, uh, at the mice. We decided to test MYC inhibition also in patient-derived tumor samples. So we can get uh, tumors from patients that uh, are um, there in the hospital at the, at the Valdebron Institute of Oncology. And we could test for the first time MYC inhibition in these tumor samples. And even there, in human tumors, MYC inhibition is a very, very effective therapeutic strategy. Right. What needs to be done now, then, to actually bring this closer to use in patients? So, at the moment, there is no MYC inhibitor available in the clinic. So what we are really trying hard to do is to develop an anti-MYC drug. How do you make your OMOMIC? So OMOMIC was uh, um, a MYC mutant that I designed, again, a long time ago. It's a part of MYC. It's only a portion of MYC in which I introduce uh, very small point mutations. And these point mutations allow OMOMIC to sequester MYC and bring it away from its target genes. And you keep it in a bottle? 
No. <laughs> well, actually, no. Uh, Omomic has a long history because I put Omomic uh, in, in bacteria first, then in cells, uh, then in mice, now in uh, tumor samples from patients. So. so, how easy is it to put in a form that you could potentially administer? So this is the new challenge for all of us, uh, but uh, we have a huge hope because uh, until now, nobody thought that MIC inhibition was even doable, was mm -hmm. even something mm -hmm. that could be done. Mm -hmm. With OMOMIC, we proved that that can be done. So we are trying to design a drug that could do the same thing that OMOMIC does. Mm. It, it's, uh, it, it would be a wonderful thing to have a magical cure for cancer. What, however, do you think cancer doctors should make of these exciting discoveries? Well, they, uh, what I, I, I hope uh, these studies prove is that uh, we all have to work together to find a drug. So, of course, for doctors, this gives new hope uh, for new therapies, uh, which hopefully will become uh, uh, available to the patients as soon as possible. It's, again, we are trying to provide new hope to doctors and patients at the mm. moment. And we're hearing at this meeting of the AACR here in Washington, D.C., that there's a huge amount of benefit from looking at the gene genes and seeing how different parts of the genes affect cancer and affect potentially cancer treatment. Do you think this gives hope that we can sort of understand this complex situation and perhaps really switch off many so cancers? This is actually a slightly different approach. Uh, so for a long time we have proceeded towards personalized medicine. Um, and so we design different therapies according to the mutation that caused the cancer. MIC inhibition gives a different opportunity. MIC inhibition could be downstream all these uh, variants, all these mutations that can cause cause cancer. It could be a common conduit for all these mutations to drive cancer. So MIC inhibition wouldn't be limited to certain types of tumors. It would be a general uh, cure for possibly all sorts of cancers. Mm. So what do you think is the take-home message coming out of this at this um, admittedly exciting but preliminary period of time? Uh, I, again, I think that this is hope. It's hope for a lot of people and it's a uh, huge encouragement to everybody that is trying to find uh, the proper MIC inhibitor to keep going because uh, MIC inhibition could be a very, very effective therapeutic strategy. Lara, thank you very much. Thank you.